Hello, it's Spencer from Spence Painting, and today we are looking at the Gallery GHAD-39. If you saw my previous video, I was trying out a cheap USB airbrush, and off the back of that, Gallery have been kind enough to send me this airbrush to try out. This is a $50 airbrush, so it's not that much more expensive than the previous one. Obviously, this does require a separate compressor, but yeah, we're going to test it out and see what it's like. So open up the box, uh, the box looks quite nice, it's a nice quality box, which is yeah, kind of nice to hold your airbrush in I suppose. And we can see here we've got a few spare o-rings which is good, and we've got an instruction leaflet which I'm going to put to one side because we don't need that here. Uh, out of the box, straight away, the airbrush, it feels really good quality, it's nice and heavy, the materials feel nice, and obviously it's nice and shiny. So this airbrush uh, is a dual action airbrush. The pre in the previous video, that wasn't dual action, that was single action. So with dual action, up and down controls the air, and forwards and backwards controls the needle and the paint. This airbrush comes with two hoppers, which are both metal, and they screw into the airbrush on the top here, and have lids, which I never really leave the lids on there because I never fill the hoppers to the point where it's needed. You can see on inside there, that's the needle. This airbrush comes with two needle sizes, 0.35 and 0.5. And it also comes with the quick release adapter, which if you have that on your hose, it's quite useful because you can quickly attach and detach your hose uh, between uses so that you're not tripping over the hose and knocking the airbrush flying anywhere. Um, or if you have multiple airbrushes, it's quite a useful little feature. The crown on this airbrush is removable without having to remove the whole nozzle, which is a great feature. It means that we can clean the tip of the needle if we get any dry paint on there in between colors or just in the middle of a session. If we take the nozzle off here, you can see the inner nozzle inside. Gallery say that their nozzle is a new designed self-centering nozzle. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but it seemed to work, so yeah. At the rear of the airbrush, we can see we've got the cutout here in the back section, so you can see the chuck and the needle. If we unscrew that back section, obviously you can see the needle a bit clearer and the chuck, so that gives us a bit more access. And obviously that's what controls the paint going backwards and forwards out of the airbrush. If we put this back section back on, you can see we have the adjuster on the rear end. And what the adjuster does, it basically puts a block next to the chuck so that it stops the needle moving back further than we want it to. This isn't really a feature I use because generally I rely on my finger control to control the paint flow. But I know some people like it as a limiting factor, especially if they're using thinner paints or you know, trying to do really fine detail work because it means that you literally cannot push the needle further back than you want it to go. Not again, not really a feature I use, but I can see it's useful for some people. And yeah, that's the overall look of the airbrush. Um, the box comes with a nice exploded diagram so if you do find a piece or you accidentally unscrew something, it's nice and easy to find where it goes back together. Um, inside the box, as I said, we've got two needles with this one, so that inside is the 0.5mm there and the nozzle to use it because when you have different size needles, you do need a different size nozzle because the nozzle needle goes into the nozzle, which kind of stands to reason. We also get a little tube of lube there as well, which is nice. Initial impressions of the airbrush, really good quality out of the box. Um, but yeah, let's give it a test and see what we think. So what I'm going to be doing is I've got this model here, which is a Terminator Captain. Um, I've already primed it up and sprayed with some blue and gold, but I'm going to reprime it in black and then I'm going to paint over it with some other colours. First thing to do with any airbrush session, whether it's a new airbrush or an old one, is just run some cleaner through it. This helps to lubricate the parts inside the airbrush so the paint, when we come to painting, won't stick to the internal parts, but it will come out the airbrush nicely. It's just one little quick step to help keep an airbrush cleaner, really. So all we do is put some cleaner in there, spray it through the airbrush, and we're good to go. We're going to be using the Vallejo Model Air Black here. This is the paint I use for priming pretty much everything. The whole Vallejo Air range are really, really nice to use straight out of the bottle through the airbrush. This is kind of just the very first test. If if this paint didn't come out of the airbrush here, we would probably be onto a dud airbrush. So. Yeah, it's a, obviously a good sign that the primer does come out of the airbrush, but yeah, not, not really expecting anything special from here. Um, from here, what we're going to do is going to slowly work up through some greys into white, just to create a nice sort of zenithorly white armor effect on the model. 
So we start off with a dark gray and then we work through into a light gray and then into white. And basically as we go through, we're adding more paint into the hopper, which generally isn't something I do. I try to mix outside the hopper and then, then put it into the hopper and spray from there. Generally because if you do mix in the hopper, it's kind of a recipe for getting some clogs and stuff because you're leaving the paint inside the hopper for longer and it gives it more chance to dry and clog. So if we can get through spraying through all these greys into the white without any clogs, that's kind of a good sign. And when we're mixing, all we're doing is we put the paint in the hopper and then we put a finger over the nozzle, pull the trigger back so that pushes air into the hopper and mixes the paint around a bit there. And then we're giving it a swizzle around with a brush as well. Finally, we're coming in with white. White is notoriously hard to airbrush with because it spats everywhere, but when we're spraying it over a grey, it comes out quite nicely. So yeah, overall initial impressions, just using base paints and you know, working our way up through that Zenithal. The airbrush feels really nice to use, really simple, no complaints there. Um, now we're going to go over to a bit more fine detail stuff. So we're using the game air paints here, which are the same as the model air paints from Vallejo. Um, and what we're going to try and do is be very controlled with this, and we're going to try and spray in the cape and his his right arm, our left arm as we're looking at it. Um, and we're going to try and do this without getting any paint onto the white armor. So it's a bit of a task because obviously it's going to show up like a sore thumb if we do. And we're going to get as close to covering the area as possible without, you know, ruining the white that we've already done. This is going to be a good test of seeing how delicate we can be with the airbrush. Um, and it's mainly a reflection on your trigger control. But if you have a bad trigger, it's harder to be controlled with it than it is with a good trigger. So yeah, obviously being controlled with the trigger is the main thing here. but. If you have got a bad trigger, it's going to be hard to be controlled. So we can see we're, the airbrush is performing really, really well, actually. Um, we're not getting any red anywhere we don't want it to be, and we're slowly building up those red coats on that cape. And yeah, it looks really nice. And go over to the arm, and um, yeah, similar story. We're getting a really nice red coat on the arm and on that cloak without overspraying too much. And yeah, the trigger is really, really nice. It feels really good to use, and um, yeah, overall really happy. To finish off the white armor, if you're going for a clean white armor look, you might want to just do some um, brush work on some white highlights. You can also do some scratches with some white and some Rhinox hide on there just to, you know, give it a bit of extra pop. I'm not going to go through all that for this because I'm not showing you an armor tutorial here. I'm showing you the review of the airbrush. So yeah, I think the airbrush is really, really good quality, really easy to use, and um, yeah, it feels really nice. So obviously, a big part of airbrushing is keeping it clean which is, you know, it's huge. One of the good things when it comes to cleaning is that we have got this little diagram so that if you're unsure about where anything goes when you're taking the airbrush apart to clean it, you can always refer to this diagram and go, oh, okay, right, that's where that needs to be or, you know, that's where this part has come from if something doesn't go together well. So this airbrush is, is fairly typical of airbrushes that you would see. It's got no real surprise parts in there. Um, everything is, yeah, pretty standard really. So. When I take, when I clean, generally what I'm using is I'm using cotton buds with um, airbrush cleaner, um, putting some airbrush cleaner on the cotton bud and then just rubbing it over the surface. So what we can do is we can take the needle out. When you take a needle out of the airbrush, always push it from the back of the airbrush through the front. What this does is it prevents any like paint particles that are stuck to the airbrush from getting pulled back into the internal workings of the rear of the airbrush, which paint should never get to that point. Um, and yeah, what we're going to do is take everything apart here, take the nozzle out here, give it a good clean. We're going to use some little pipe cleaners to get any little specks of paint out of there. And um, yeah, put it all back together. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to run through that really quickly and you can see sort of how I clean everything out here. So yeah, as I said, we can use some pipe cleaners as well as the cotton buds to get into any sort of tubular areas where we want to get a good scrub. Um, yeah, just basically once we've cleaned all the areas off, we can put it all back together again. So 
Now one thing I found as I was putting this together is that I hadn't pushed the trigger down far enough. So as I was putting it back together, the trigger wasn't fully in there. So as I pulled it back, it didn't quite go properly. Um, and what I found is that the internal part where the, um, the plate that the trigger pushes against, that had come out. So I had to basically take the airbrush apart a bit, which with the help of the, um, of the diagram in the book, made it really, the diagram in the box, made it really easy um, so just take that apart and you know you can see here that what I'm doing basically putting it back together again with the uh, the plate in the right place using a pair of tweezers um, and yeah that was the only sort of technical issue I had with the whole airbrush just that I hadn't put the part in the right place when I was putting it back together really so my fault but uh, yeah that was that was the only stumbling block I had in the whole uh, whole experience of using this airbrush. So overall, this airbrush, I mean, it's $50. I would say that this airbrush is probably as nice as the Harder and Steenbeck Evolution that I use, which is, um, yeah, it's saying a lot because that airbrush is probably like three times the price. It comes in a nice box, this one does. It comes with some nice features that the other ones don't. Um, really solid build construction. Um, yeah, overall, really, really impressed with it. And um, other than that one little issue with the trigger, I, I can't say any, you know, I can't see any negatives about this airbrush. So if you're in the market for a new airbrush for less than $50, I would certainly recommend looking at this one. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it means a lot. Thanks very much. Bye.